I'm grateful, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to contribute to the motion for the approval of the budget for the year ending December 31st, 2019. Mr. Speaker, um, this budget talks about a few things and the local government, and one striking one is on the election of MMDCs. And it is refreshing to note that uh, 2019 budget is capturing that. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my only concern is that we all know that looking at the voting records, the voter turnout records uh, in well, this. Um, please hold on. Sit down your mind. So I'm a back time. For you. Speaker, the Honorable Member I, I is you a were good one friend one. of mine, and I, I want him to do things right in the House. Yeah. The motion is not about the budget statement of the government. Please, at least, pay attention to the motion and follow it. So, since you are my friend, I want to remind you to go back to it so that you can contribute to it. Because if you are contributing to the budget statement, pay two of the other paper. You are my friend. Thank you, my friend. Well noted. You are a senior Honourable member of the Honourable 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 Honourable. Honourable. Yes, Honourable Speaker, Honourable. what is it? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I, I refer the House to Order 861. Order 861. Under rules of debate, a member desiring to speak shall rise in his place and address the chair only after catching. Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Ampim Daku was up and I saw the Honourable Rashid Telpu's name show up on the screen. So clearly, he, he has been risen in his place. Honourable Member, please continue to address me from your place. That is where you are. Continue to address me from there. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as I was saying, we are planning to hold a referendum in 2019 for the election of MMBCs. And I'm drawing the attention of this government to the voter turnout in uh, our district assembly elections because they intend to hold it together with the local level elections. Since 98, the voter turnout have been uh, very low, about 41.6% in 1998. It dropped to 33% in 2002, 39% in 2006, 37% in 2010, and about 39% in 2015. We know that we need a minimum of about 40% voter turnout for the referendum to carry. And so we need to ensure that we embark on vigorous education for us to be able to achieve this. It is also very worrying because we have heard executives of the new patriotic party making statements that the decision to elect MMDCs is unpopular amongst the rank and file of the MPP. And that is worrying. Uh, that is a huge threat to the president's I don't remember who said that. Uh, the, ge the general secretary of the MPP. That, oh, he has said that and it's reported you, you all you, over. So, the, my advice is I that remember, the president... I don't remember. I, you are in this house. The minister has brought the amendment, and the process is ongoing. Um, whatever anybody says, let the record reflect that the party, the president is following through with the process, so ignore. I agree with that, uh, right, Honorable Speaker. I'm only asking that we need to make sure that the education starts and starts in good time, and then we must put everybody in line because the president cannot afford to add this to the tall list of failed promises that they have made to the people of this country. Mr. Speaker, I have been very worried about the amount of monies that have been going to the MMDAs for their activities through the District Assembly's Common Fund. Mr. Speaker, for uh, lack of time, I'm going to give just a few assemblies. First, Myung District Assembly. In 2016, 
the amount of direct transfers that was sent from the local uh, the district assembly common fund to the Mion district assembly was 1.8 million. This dropped to 1.6 million in 2017. And in 2018, the two quarters that have uh, gone so far is 703,000 cities. If it continues along this rate, you realize that the 2018 transfers will even be lower than the transfers that went in 2017. If you look at Boku Municipal, 2016, 1.6 million was sent. 2017, they received 1.4 million. And 2018, two quarters so far, first and second quarters sent, a total of 544 million is what they have received. Once again, if this trend will continue, they are going to receive far less than what they received in 2017. This is worrying because the functions that we expect the assemblies to perform is not being reduced. It is the same functions. In effect, we are even asking them to do more because we expect them to contribute uh, uh, to support government flagship uh, programs. But Mr. Speaker, on the back of this, it is more worrying because in 2016, tax revenue was about 26 billion. It increased to 34 billion in 2017, and it is projected to be about 38 billion in 2018. So when tax revenue is even increasing, the amount of monies that the assemblies are receiving is actually dwindling. And this does not support decentralization. That is why my senior uh, colleague, Honorable Neil Ante Van der Poy, said that this government is actually re-centralizing almost everything in this country. Mr. Speaker, we did visitation to a number of assemblies, and this budget has also mentioned the IPEP projects and a number of things that are being done. But Mr. Speaker, there is something that is worrying. Every assembly has their own medium-term development plan, and they have listed a number of projects through consultations throughout the, the district to find out what and what the assembly will do in the next four years. They have their priorities, but someone sits in Accra and decides that the assemblies must be given toilets, the assemblies must be given this, the assemblies must be given that. Why don't we channel the IPEP project, sit with the assemblies and find out what is in their medium-term development plans, and then tailor the development to suit them? Why do we have a straight jacket thing that we are giving everybody toilet, we are giving everybody boreholes, um, um, when toilets and boreholes are not the priorities of every assembly. On our trip to the assemblies, the assembly at a, a trip for Hemang, the DC lamented seriously that he was there and heard that a toilet is being constructed in a community. The assembly was not even aware. Meanwhile, their priority, the topmost priority of that assembly is a polyclinic. If you have allocated monies to an assembly, why don't you sit with the assemblies and say, okay, we have so much for you, 100,000 cities. What are your priorities? Even if you will award it from Accra, from the Jubilee House, sure. sit with the assemblies and let it fit into their medium-term development plans. Yes. Mr. Oh. Speaker. Well, go, continue, continue. Mr. Speaker, another issue that is worrying. In fact, when my good friend, Honorable Opong Nkrumah, was speaking, uh, was contributing to this debate. Over. Yes, leader. Switch off your mic so you save time. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member just said contracts are awarded from the Jubilee House. <laughs> no, contracts, contracts are not, even if you should not even come in, contracts are not awarded from the, from the Jubilee House. So he should correct himself. Contracts even are not awarded from the Jubilee House. They are not. I don't remember proceed. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. my Mr. good friend, Honorable Kojo Pong Kroma, said something that he was referring to some earlier contributors and used uh, Anuma Kukunde uh, principle. And today, uh, uh, Honorable Ediomi repeated the same thing. And I said, Jesus Christ. But I said to myself that fortunately, these people are accounts and they understand the, 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 the best description of nepotism 
uh, by their hands. They call it Coco Football Ball. That is the best description of uh, 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 nepotism in this country. Mr. Speaker, I was going through the budget and paragraph 807. I was surprised to see that five astroturfs with spectator stands and dressing rooms were constructed at Medina, Chebi, and Walawale. Medina, the then minister for Zongo's constituency, Chebi, the president's hometown and his constituency, and Walawale, the vice president's constituency. So the minister for Zongo development gets the ball. Koko football ball principal looks through, who do I know? The president, and here's the ball to the president. The presidents look through, who do I know? And then send it to Walawale. Between uh, Chebi and Walawale, a lot of things. That is what happened. Um, so the principal underlined this. Is that Kuku football ball principle? <laughs> Mr. Speaker. Sit down. Mr. Sit down. Speaker. Uh, finally, I think I have a, only one minute more. Mr. Speaker. You, you go. You go. You. Mr. Speaker, uh, in column 244, it is surprising that we are still boasting about having restored Twitter trainees' allowances. But Mr. Speaker, I challenge anybody to ask any teacher trainee today, they will prefer to have direct employment after their training to any allowance that is being restored. That is what the people uh, in our training colleges are looking for. And so, Mr. Speaker, in as much as I will want us to support this budget, I want us to know that expectations are very high for all of us in this country, and we must eschew the Kuku football war principle and spread development all across this country. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Yeah.